A few days ago, I think it was last Tuesday, the gospel was the beginning of the apostolic discourse of the Lord addressed to the disciples, addressed to the twelve. And among other things, the gospel two days ago was, it was about the job description of the apostles. The Lord was telling them, the first on the list of their job description is that they would proclaim the gospel to all the nations. And the succeeding items in the job description include curing the sick, driving out demons, healing the lepers. My dear friends, those are the job description of the twelve. But in addition to the inner circle of the twelve, we are told today in the gospel that the Lord appointed 72 other disciples. Why 72? The number 72 is significant. 12 times 6 equals 72. So you have six groups of 12 in the next batch of the disciples sent out by the Lord two by two to the places that he himself would be visiting and that is a good description of what community life is. The disciples are sent out two by two. They are not to be lone rangers. They are not to be isolated persons. They are to be sent out together with somebody so that they would together preach the gospel to different places. And then, following the call of the 72, the, the Lord Jesus goes on to give some other instructions. I was telling in the homily last Tuesday, I was saying that the Lord was like giving a retreat to the apostles. He was like preaching to them a retreat, giving them a seminar before they embark on their first missionary journey. And today the gospel consists of some other specific or particular instructions of the Lord to the 72. And I tried to summarize them. I realized there are seven, seven different instructions. Let me enumerate the seven instructions. It's not going to be long. It's going to be quick. And let me say a few words about each of the seven instructions. Number one, the Lord points out that the harvest is great, but there are very few workers, very few who are willing to do the harvesting work with the Lord. My dear friends, this is a text which is often thrown at us during vocation campaigns. When vocation directors go around and announce to young men and young women, the harvest is great, workers are few. And we tend to hear it as a call for more priests, more brothers, more sisters. Yes, it is. But the challenge is also being thrown out to other people, to all the followers of the Lord, to find more people to join in the harvesting work. In other words, we have to be very careful as we listen to these words not to exclude ourselves, not to exclude yourself because you are also part of the discipleship group of the Lord. The words are addressed to everybody and it is a call for some kind of of response from every one of us and it is never too late to respond to the call how can you help in the vocation campaign for example you can pray for more vocations and you can also choose if you have the capacity you can also help young men young boys like here at Christ the King studying for the priesthood and you can help support them not only with your prayers but also financially in their studies and in their formation. The second instruction, Jesus warns the followers that following Him is not easy. It is never going to be easy. The Lord said, I am sending you out like lambs in the midst of wolves. 
My dear friends, life is not easy. It is never easy. Following Jesus is not easy. Christianity is for the brave. It is not for the weak-hearted. The third, the disciples are called on to travel light. Travel light. Learn to travel light. Jesus himself had nowhere to lay his head on and he only had the clothes he wore. And come to think of it, so many of us are weighed down by the things we own. That is why for some of us it is difficult to die because we do not know how are we going to dispose, how are we going to live the material things that we have accumulated. Our mission is urgent. There are few laborers for a potentially huge harvest, but we have to learn to travel light. We have to learn to trust again in divine providence. The apostles, the disciples are men of the gospel. They are men of God. They are not men of business. They are not men of trade. The fourth instruction. The disciples are to be bearers of peace. Peace. The Lord said, Blessed are the peacemakers. They will be called children of God. Peace or shalom is not only the absence of violence or war. It is a deep inner harmony with oneself, with others, with one's environment, and with God. In other words, we are challenged to be peacemakers. We are challenged to be bringers of peace. The fifth instruction. The evangelizer is to stay in the first house that accepts him. He should not be going around looking for better accommodation. At the same time, he is to be provided with shelter and hospitality because the worker deserves his pay. The next. The work of the disciple is primarily to heal the sick in the places they go to. Healing should be taken here in a wider sense, including healing of body, feelings of mind and spirit, because the kingdom of God is at hand. And finally, the Lord is telling the disciples, there is any place where they are not received, they are to leave that place right away. Because even those even those people are to know that the kingdom of God is near to them, but there is always the hope that the results of their very rejection of the kingdom will lead to a deeper awareness later on. There might be experiences of rejection, but they, it should not discourage, it should not disappoint the apostle or the disciple. So my dear brothers and sisters, clearly, we cannot literally apply all of these points to our own work on behalf of the gospel, but we can get inspired by these instructions specific to the disciples and also specific to us as we also try our best to follow the Lord in our own way, in our own way of life. Amen. Let us all stand.